Right, ladies and gentlemen, the show is on its way. All right, our next fabulous chef. We know her as the winner of season five on the next Iron Chef Redemption. And this world-renowned chef, after her great successes in France, she has brought her talents back to the United States. Executive chef at Butter in New York City, authored two best-selling cookbooks, Old School Comfort Food, and her latest, The Home Cook. She's appeared on Food Network's Iron Chef America as a challenger and a judge, also a recurring judge on Food Network's Chopped. She hosts her own shows, The Cooking Loft and Alex's Day Off on the Food Network. Please welcome Chef Alex Gernicelli. Hello! Oh my God, I have, I didn't realize I have, I'd have so many victims. How are you? Hi, how are we today? There's a little timer here. I feel like I'm in Kitchen Stadium right now. I, I've, already, I've already spent two minutes and 30 seconds. I better get cracking. Are people allowed to ask questions? Oh, great. So I'm going to demo two recipes. I'm using the Turbo Pot, which is this cookware you see in front of you. And you figure, I'm a mom, I've got a very demanding 10-year-old, and I'm a chef, so if I'm standing here cooking with some pots and pans, they've got to be good. My only request is take all the pictures you want, but please don't video, and I'll tell you why. Because I don't have enough of an attention span to talk to an audience and not stare into people's phones. It's not a Lady Gaga thing. It's an attention deficit thing. So thank you. Take a million pictures and string it together into a home video. Okay, I'm gonna make two things, one savory, one sweet. I got this cookware at home a, a few weeks ago and I put it in the cabinet with all the other stuff. I have a 10 year old and I have a boyfriend who cooks. So we're a serious household. You could get chopped at any minute for any one thing. I made my daughter some fried eggs. She said one was good, but the other was, you know, you over it, mom, and it was a little overcooked. So, um, yeah, I get chopped in my own home more than I do on television. So I'm going to start by making a little sauce. Um, just one of those kind of basic sauces to illustrate a little bit how helpful um, cookware like this can be. Um, we started by making a pasta recipe at home, which is how I developed the recipe for this demo. I wanted to do something that kind of covered techniques or things that we do all the time at home. I don't know about you, but I love to cook, but when I'm at home, I want to get out of the kitchen and I want to get eating. And I don't want six sinkfuls of dishes. I'm really spoiled in the dish doing department because when I cook at the restaurant, there's a dishwasher. So I make a huge mess and I'm like, I don't know why people don't do this at home. Then I go home and I make egg salad and the dishes are up to the ceiling and I'm like, oh my God. So I'm really learning a lot about the fact that I don't want to spend all my time at home in the kitchen and I don't want to spend the rest of the time doing the dishes. So this is kind of one of those two pot meals. Um, you know, I'm Italian American, but um, I really cook French food in my restaurant. I have one restaurant called Butter. If you haven't been, it's in Midtown Manhattan. It's only been there for 16 years, so don't worry about it if you haven't yet made it. I'm gonna try to stay open for 16 more. Um, but at home, growing up, my dad and my mother both made a lot of sort of simple Italian dishes, um, usually with pasta, sometimes with rice. Here she goes videoing me. How are we? We're, you know who I'm talking to, though. So um, the, um, some with pasta, some with rice, and some with neither. And so I kind of love those dishes you have where they start out like a pasta dish, but you leave the pasta out. Now, here's the deal. I make the dish without pasta. I eat it, I love it. I feel so good and healthy, like I didn't carb it up. And then I literally end up eating like a cup of flour in the middle of the night because I just miss the gluten. Do you, do you feel my pain or what? Either that or I'm like, I'll just make a baked potato and I won't have any gluten. And then I put it like on two pieces of toast. So the gluten is gonna get me one way or another, but this is one of those dishes that you can do either way and that way, if you do it, it's your fault. I tried. I'm gonna start by just building a simple sauce. You see these, I think part of the reason that these pans were immediately appealing to my daughter, because they look cool. They're like kind of Star Wars, Star Trek chic. Um, I call these pots, in, at home I call them my Fast and Furious pots. Um, these are aluminum fins, 
and they literally make the surface for conducting heat bigger and wider and more even. What does that mean and why do we care? That was my first question, because it's nice to say what things do until I started cooking with them. They sped up everything I did. I, mean, I actually had to be on the ball because things moved so quickly. They cooked really evenly. There was no scorching, there was no burning, and it was faster. The fastest thing of all was the boiling of the water, and I made some stock, and I made some soup. I was like boiling cauldrons of water, like this isn't any faster. Because in my house, we test something, and we really put it through its paces. And this stuff even passed the test with my daughter. So the other day I thought, you know what, I'm gonna just make something in the regular old skillet. But you know when you cook and you're really hungry and you can't wait? So you like put something in the oven and you're like, I don't care that it's half raw, I'm eating it. My daughter and I were both really hungry and we're standing over the pan watching this cook. And I look up at her and she says, she, I look down at her, although soon I'm gonna look up at her. And she said, um, you should have used the turbo pot, mom. We'd be eating by now. And I'm like, oh my God, I've got a walking commercial for this product. Um, so here I've got, I just split one, you know, classic white onion. These are a few cloves of garlic. I definitely cook with a lot of garlic, I'm sorry. I didn't slice it Goodfellas style, but you get the idea. Five nice big cloves, and then I'm just gonna get that going in the pan with a little bit of olive oil. Questions? Hostile comments? What's the worst thing I've ever eaten on Chop? Let's go, let's heal. Let's heal together. Right here, Chef. Yeah. So I was actually on Chop Junior and you were- Are you okay? You were on Chop Junior and you're here? Well, you so you left your therapist? <laughs> you were actually um, my judge. I was your judge? Episodes. Did you yeah. get chopped? Yeah. Oh. In the, uh... Guys, she's sitting in the front row and I chopped her. Thoughts? <laughs> I was wondering what your competition strategy is, like when you go in all the Ah, oh, you came to figure me out, huh? <laughs> you said that through gritted teeth and you're not really smiling. Is everything okay? No, I'm kidding. What's my competition strategy? Uh, keep competing until you win. Yeah, um, so I was on the regular Chop Junior and I won that and then I was on the Champions episode and that's... So you won twice, what's wrong with you? <laughs> um, what's my competition strategy? That's hard. You know, I've, uh, I've lost my fair share of competitions. I mean, people seem to remember when you win. I'm like, let's circle back, people, to all the ones that I didn't win. Um, it's taken me a long time to kind of come. I'm going to put a splash of water in here. These pots go so fast. I literally, I don't know about you, but I keep water by my stove at all times. And I just will randomly throw water into stuff just until I can get to it. Um, my strategy has been the more I cook, first of all, it's the stance in front of the judges, calmly, hands folded, smiling, slightly, looking down at the floor, ashamed that you might win, praying you won, pretending you're not nervous. That's my marketing strategy. My food strategy is um, try to develop as much flavor as you can as fast as possible. I think when you cook a dish and, you, and it feels like it cooked forever and it cooked for 10 or 15 minutes, that's that deep flavor that a judge, you can't get past that great taste. I think things can be flawed, they can be overcooked, but the bottom line is if it has a lot of taste, you keep eating it. And imagine if you had something where you could cook and it would develop flavor really quickly. I mean, just imagine, I'm just saying. Um, but simple too. I mean, the first dishes I made on competition, I was like, I'm gonna make a chicken on top of a steak with caviar and a, and a live duck. Now I'm like, here's a fried egg. So, you know, the pendulum swings. I also, um, one last piece of advice, because I actually don't often get this question. How do you compete? Pay zero attention to anyone else competing or anyone else around you, and if the host, is talking to you, smile politely, and abort the mission. Get out, smile, tell the host you love him or her, and you think she's amazing, and you follow them on Instagram, and goodbye. It's all about you and this. I even say to people, let me lose this, and then we'll chat. The hardest for me is actually Kitchen Stadium, when you know they have a floor reporter, 
and the floor reporter's like, hey, tell me how you're doing. I'm like, how, how do you think I'm doing, first of all? Second of all, I say, let me screw all this up, and then we can chat. You know what I mean? So get out while you can. That was a great question. Thank you for asking. Because there is a whole mindset behind it. And then I'm at home, and my daughter's like, why are you rushing? And I'm like, because cause that's what I do. My daughter's like, I'll race you to the end of the block. I'm like, I'm going to beat you. I mean, it's so, I need counseling. Everything becomes a competition to me. You're like, I'm so sorry. I just asked you a question, and you went nuts. This is just the home and houseware show. Why are you talking about going nuclear? Anyway, did I answer your question? She's like, yes, please stop. OK. Let's recap. Garlic, onions, olive oil. Garlic, onions, olive oil, salt. Just cooking. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Can you see it well? Do you guys see that this is kind of zipping along and it looks good? By the way, if you want to sell your house, <coughs> Skip the cookies in the oven, just cook garlic and onions on the stove. People are like, what are you making? And you're like, if you buy the house, I'll give you the pan. <laughs> Not what's inside it, but the pan and the house. Other questions? Wow, really? We had an ice-breaking question and then nothing? By the way, I'm, I'm going to get boiling water and I'm going to cook some pasta and green beans here. Yes? With the uneven surface on the I can't hear you. With the uneven surface on the bottom of the turbo pot? With the even surface on the bottom. Flat. In other words, the technology on the bottom of these pots distributes the heat evenly. OK, so it is flat, so it could be used on a glass cooktop. You mean electric? Yes. It's made for gas. OK. And you can buy a propane burner for 20 bucks and get to it. <laughs> I'll buy one on the way home. <laughs> yeah. These are the kind of things you want to come to, but thanks for the question. Because that's one of the things I'm supposed to say, and I'm like, how do you say that naturally? And look at you. Just roll up and say it. Next question. Next victim. Put a little more water just to soften these up. So we, we like to make pasta at home. and we You have, like to make pasta at home? Yeah, we have this huge 18... 1000 BTU burner, but it takes forever to get the water boiling still. How much faster are those pots to boil than a pot that didn't have that? OK. How much faster? I was worried I was get these kind of questions. And I'll tell you why. Because I got a D in every math course I ever took in my life. So when you get with math and me and percentages and stuff, I'm not so great. I would say I see at least a third to close to a half the time. For, boiling, for doing something like boiling a pot of water. And honestly, I brought this stuff home and I was like, yeah, right, uh-huh. Just like anybody would. I was like, I'm gonna pretend that I'm a skeptical consumer and I'm gonna cook with these pots. And I've been cooking with them for a few weeks. I have other pots I cook with. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't sit at home like, I'm only using this pot. But these have become part of my regular set of pots. Like, I have that that like Le Creuset with the broken handle that my mom gave me 20 years ago that I use, I don't know why. It scorches, it burns, it's ruined so many things, but I love it. And I open the cabinet and I'm like, oh, there you are, hello. You have those, that cookware that's home to you. For whatever reason, it tells a story. Um, and I can tell you feel affectionate about your big pot that takes forever to boil. This really speeds that up. And considering we are often boil, I'm putting a little tomato paste in here for my grandma. I got to pour some out for my grandma. Um, considering boiling water, making soup, making stock, cooking and heating up liquids is something we do a lot, just in regular cooking, even if you're not fancy. I'm not saying like, this cooks your caviar faster. This is something that we do routinely that's sped up. About an average of, I'm going to go with 40%. You seem to be a math person. So I'm going to go with that. And that's generally what I've found to be true. I'm now going to add a little bit of canned tomato because I love it. Tomatoes are a fruit. They have a lot of pectin. What does that mean? It means when you cook them, these are fresh cherry tomatoes and then canned on top of that. The, the canned whole tomatoes, they have a lot of pectin. They're jammy. The liquid is thick already. That's another thing you can do to get to your result faster, right, is add something that's already been par cooked in with some fresh tomatoes for flavor. And Can you see that? Can you smell it? Yeah? 
You taking a nose bath out there in the first row or what? Okay. And this is something, I honestly, I might just eat that and just stop right there. Now, I've got some water that I'm simmering and I'm gonna use it twice. I'm gonna use it first just to cook some green beans. I'm gonna quick blanch the green beans. If you're making a pasta dish with tomato sauce, you've got water on for the pasta anyway. It's not an extra step to just blanch the green beans. And then you're thinking, well, why should I do it? I like to blanch vegetables for a minute or two and then put them in something. I think they have like a fresher, cleaner flavor. I just like it. You don't have to do it. I'm not gonna come to your house and arrest you. I might, but it's doubtful. So I've got just some classic string beans here. Drop them in here. Give it a little stir. You notice I salted the water. People are always appalled at chefs, like we take a whole container of salt and dump it in. <gasps> I love to do it. Now I just add more just to shock people. You do have to remember, remember that the salt you're adding to water you cook for pasta, you're not eating all of that, right? And if you're gonna cook, man, put the salt in the food, it's worth it. And if you're cooking without salt, which a lot of people are, get a bottle of red wine vinegar and a container of cayenne and find your joy. It's gonna happen. That's a question I get a lot. The other thing I do is like, my daughter actually is 10 and has high blood pressure. That's my ex-husband's genetics. You see what I mean, ladies, when we mix our gene pool with these dudes? <laughs> um, she has high blood pressure. And so she eats, and she doesn't really like salt, which is unbelievable to me. Literally, I could eat this. <clears throat> so I cook for her without salt, generally. When she wants more taste, I put a little red wine vinegar, squeeze a lemon or a pinch of cayenne, not too much. She likes a little heat. She calls it Bobby Flay heat just a little bit, which I think is cute. And he's like, wait a minute, what do you mean I'm only a little heat? I'm like, no, no, you're, you're hot, hot, hot. Um, but you know, for a 10-year-old's taste, the funny thing about my daughter is she'll eat like duck tongues and chicken livers and she hates cheese and cake. And I'm like, you're not my child. I'm giving you back. I don't know where, but the stork is taking you back. No, I'm kidding. I'm sure she'd be really happy to know I said that. Good talk. Oh, thank you, a magic ice bath. Okay, here's a, thank you. I wish this happened at home, don't you? You just wish you had someone who dropped stuff off. So why put green beans or beans in general or green vegetables in an ice bath? It stops the cooking, keeps them super green. If you let these green beans just sit, they roll on and on and on, they continue to cook. Like when we talk about carryover cooking with meat, vegetables do the same thing and then they get all kind of brown and unhappy. Pull that up out, questions? You mentioned Bobby Flay. My I mentioned Bobby Flay. My question to you is, how happy were you when you beat him in the hamburger bash? How happy was I when I beat Bobby Flay in the hamburger bash? Down in Florida. <laughs> oh, I won the burger bash at the South Beach Wine and Food Festival uh, uh, about a week and a half ago. And I was standing on the stage with all the other chefs, and I obviously I genuinely didn't know I won. And I had actually given my team this pep talk. like. We gave it our best. We were amazing. Jazz hands. I did the whole thing. I bought them a bottle of bourbon. They were medicating. It was fine. And then we won. And I was like, oh. I mean, I really like the pictures. Are, all of them are this. There's not one normal picture of me. Um, but actually, Bobby didn't um, compete in the Burger Bash. So I, she said, how happy were you when you beat him? He didn't compete, and th but there were 37 burgers. And it was the, we won the Blind Judges Taste Test Award, and I couldn't believe it. I really, I mean, that's like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right? So I have um, two cooks that work with me, both named Mike, so we called it Two Mikes. They were so happy. I think they're still at the bar. <laughs> Do you guys see how quickly this is kind of coming together and happening? I don't know about you, but to me, it really looks like it's, and do you see how quickly it's rolling along and how evenly it's cooking? I actually have to stir it to make sure it doesn't get ahead of me. Okay. Now, I've got my green beans in a little bit of the ice bath. I'm gonna let this cook for a minute. We're gonna bring this water to a boil and cook the pasta. I'd love a big bowl, like kind of a big one that's see-through so they can see this pasta come together. 
The other thing I'm gonna add is, I didn't add any pepper here. I just added salt. I like a pinch of crushed red pepper flakes. Sometimes I use that, particularly in tomato sauce. I use it instead of pepper. I just really like it. It's a light, sort of slow burn of a heat without being super spicy. I kind of think it does a lot for the tomatoes. Sometimes I like to, you know, leave that pepper mill at home. Questions? And add a little more water. The, to me, the, I would eat this right now. And you see how little, how quick it's cooked. I, I can't believe this, seriously. Yeah. Do you have a favorite pizza parlor in Manhattan? Yeah. Of course. Do I have a favorite pizzeria in Manhattan? I have a few. I mean, it depends. Like, pizza's a mood. I know we're in Chicago, OK? I know pizza is a touchy topic. I'm a native New Yorker, so I'm assuming you're talking about New York style pizza, because Chicago pizza, I'm not the authority. I notice a lot of, like, I might get up and walk out looks. Actually, she is leaving. You're leaving? Was it something I said? I can't work like this. All right. Um, there's a pizzeria on um, Sixth Avenue in Bleecker called Joe's. It's like a regular old joint. You go in there, they're not particularly nice. They're like, what's up? We know you want our pizza. You know this like tired look that a lot of really busy, iconic places get? Like, yeah, we know. You're excited about our pizza. Yay. And the pizza's so good. And I just tolerate that. And I just go in there, and I have a slice or two. I have a big soda, a soda, a sinful, dirty soda. The bubbles go up my nose. I chew too quickly. I get heartburn. I love it. So that's my favorite. Um, in terms of other pizzerias I like, there's another one. I'm just dropping the green beans in here, by the way. And this could be the dish. You could stop here and not use the pasta. And to me, this is very Italian. Green beans actually have starch. So they're kind of like a starch. And they look so good in there, don't they? Come on. Yeah. Um, what other? There's a lot of fancy pizzerias in New York. Um, I really like, there's a pizzeria called Motorino. The pizza's so good. They don't really cut it. It comes like in a little pie. And I don't want to use utensils. I want to fold it in half. And it's like a semi-sophisticated place. I want to fold it in half and go to the bathroom and eat it like a savage. And then come back to the table and have another dummy pizza waiting for me that I would then eat very politely. Um, so those are my recommendations. Unsponsored, unsolicited, true. Do you see how quickly these green beans are just melding right in there? Other questions? I noticed you didn't use a lot of herbs. You notice I didn't use a lot of herbs. Is it okay? Oh, no, I just wonder if you use dried when you would use them, would you reconstitute them? Sure. Mostly use fresh? Um, I actually cook with an obscene amount of herbs generally, and I try to use fresh ones. Um, where was that big bowl? In this case, I used just basil in this recipe. I actually didn't put any classic oregano or anything in the sauce, although you could. You could use dried oregano. What I like to do is drop the basil in the bowl where I'm going to toss the whole finished dish and then drop it in hot, turn, just spin it a couple times with cheese, and serve. I love the way the basil is so aromatic and floral when it doesn't cook a lot. But you could add dried oregano, totally. You could add a little fresh or dried thyme to this. There's a lot of flavor being developed here very quickly and very cleanly. So I would hesitate to say add a lot of things, probably just some oregano and basil. Other questions, hostile comments? I know Italians like their pasta. Italians like their pasta. Right. But um, do you use any kind of squashes, like spaghetti squash, or substitutes for Do I use spaghetti? Um, do I use spaghetti squash as a substitute for pasta? No. <laughs> um, but I love spaghetti squash. And I will split a spaghetti squash and steam it, and then put the tiniest pinch of raw sugar, cinnamon, and a squeeze of lime, and just scoop it and eat it. And I love it. You could totally make zoodles, zucchini noodles or whatever. I can't believe I just said that out loud, zoodles. I said that. Um, you could totally do that. I really am pointing out that the green beans in this dish make it like the pasta. So you could just have that be your dish. Or, or, or as I'm going to do, add a whole pan of pasta and just go nuts. But yeah, you could, totally. I would recommend for this flavor profile using zucchini 
as opposed to spaghetti squash. To me, spaghetti squash cooks really quickly. It's very fragile, the textures. I might go with like ginger and lime, maybe a splash of soy with the spaghetti squash and go more in this heartier tomato direction with zucchini. Other questions? You guys are like serious. I'm like, I gotta get it together. Yes. I'm headed to New York for the first time. Where are two places that I need to go? You're headed to, uh, you guys talk so quickly. Did anybody hear that? <laughs> Slow down, girl. Only the cookware goes quickly. What did you say? I'm headed to New York for the first time. She's going to New York for the first time, folks. Where are two places that I need to eat? Two places, I love the directive. You can only give me two. Two days, that's at least six restaurants in my book, but okay, two. Um, butter, right, yeah, right, my own restaurant. Thank you, that's my GM over there. No, I'm just kidding. Um, where would I go if I had two days in New York? I'd have to go to an Italian restaurant. I really like a restaurant called Hearth and a, a restaurant called Via Carota. Those are my two sort of Italian spots. I love the chefs, I love the way they cook. I think the food's so good. You will definitely overeat. Do not eat lunch. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Um, I might go for a slice of classic Italian pizza, chose, just to have like a walk around meal. I might go to Ferrara Bakery in Little Italy and have a cannoli. Here I am going off on a tangent. You said two places. Um, I might go to Wohop, which is an old um, tea house from the 1920s in Chinatown, where they have really great dumplings and stir fries and their family, mom and pop, and it's not fancy, and it's just so good. Mm, is that good? I also like a place called Eisenberg Sandwich Shop. It's like a greasy spoon on Fifth Avenue. You go in there, you have an egg sandwich and a lime ricky, and there's like too much pepper on the eggs, and the lime ricky is super sour. It'll wake you up, it's just so refreshing, and they're so nice. I like mom and pops. You know, there's like five left in Manhattan. In between all the Starbucks and Dwayne Reed's are like five restaurants. We're hanging in. Other questions? Okay, I'm gonna drop this pasta. So this is just a, a pound of fusilli, by the way. Back, excuse me to go backwards, but the back to the pasta question. Um, yes. Have you tried bonza chickpea pasta for your GF people, gluten-free? Sure, why not? Good stuff. Sounds good. If you like it, I love it. I'm not telling you what to eat, I'm just providing a little roadmap. Do whatever you want. I often make a recipe. I go somewhere and people say, I made your steak and onions recipe. I substituted pork chops for the steak and apples for the onions and it was awesome. Thanks for the recipe. And I'm like, bon appetit. Sometimes people just use a recipe as a guideline, right? Why not? I'm not gonna sit at home and say, you know, you didn't use the vanilla extract? What happened? Where did we go wrong? The wheels are off. Um, I'm more of an anyone can cook type. Go for it. All right, I'm gonna shut this sauce off and you guys are gonna see how this just keeps rolling. By the way, the heat's off and look at that. And I've got the pasta swimming in the same water I cooked the green beans in that I already know is salted. I love cooking pasta. Are you the kind of person that cooks pasta and tests it like 10 times because you want to eat like a bowl of, yeah. Yeah, I just happened to accidentally drop those testers into a bowl of butter. I'm like, I have to have it, you know, I gotta understand. I don't have anything to understand. Then I went to a nutritionist, he's like, honey, what more information about food do you need? And I was like, plenty, I'll see you later. All right, so this is just power cooking. Someone asked me today, what am I gonna do if the box says cook 11 minutes, right? What am I gonna do about hard boiling an egg that, that takes only seven minutes? You're gonna have to rewrite your instructions. Now, one of the things I, I wanna just mention quickly about cooking in general is that when you cook something, let it sit for a minute. It's so hard to do, because often you cook and you wanna eat immediately because you're hungry. But I'm just letting this kind of hang out and just cool down a little bit. Things really taste better when you let them cool for a few minutes or even when you pop them in the fridge and you eat them the next day. People are always asking me, how long does stuff keep? Stuff tastes so much better when you let it sit, except for exceptions like donuts, bread, and cake, which need to be eaten immediately. They spoil, I understand, within an hour of making. I mean, that's just, that's just my pro tip. I'm just trying to, I'm looking out for you guys. Other questions? 
So in here, by the way, just to finish, I've got the bowl of cheese and basil. So that's where the pasta will get dropped once it's cooked. Toss it with the sauce. Yes. Um, hi, I just was wondering what, uh, what was your burger that you won with? Oh, at Burger Bash. Um, we made, so we started out super chefy and fancy and like we were like, oh, we're gonna do a Cajun burger that's breaded and pan fried. No, literally, with this and that and the other. And then we made these, we pickled these sunchokes, Jerusalem artichokes, they're kind of like potatoes but you can really kind of eat them raw. They're, they're like in between a water chestnut and a potato. Um, and they've got this awesome nutty flavor. They're so delicious. And I always like to drop something in there in this pot. I'm gonna turn this down. Um, so we, we decided to pickle the sunchokes, just dice them up and pickle them in vinegar. We just put them in red wine vinegar for a week. And then we mix them with chopped up pickles, a little bit of caper juice, um, a little bit of lemon zest, weirdly, which you don't associate with a hamburger. Mix that all together and just let it hang out in the fridge for a while. Um, American cheese, come on, just stop. No Edom, no Havarti, no Gouda made from the tears of milkmaids. American cheese, people, huddle up, it's good. Um, one person cooked every hamburger that night. We, I think we cooked about 1,500 to 1,700 hamburgers. One person refused to let anybody else cook any. This is one of my cooks. He's, he's currently in the ICU, by the way, recovering. Um, they were sort of, they had like the little bit of pink in the middle, but they were juicy, melted American cheese, and we dropped a little mustard on the first side when they were cooked, and then we'd flip it and just sear that little bit of mustard on the burger, bun, cheese, Slaw, bun, good night, with sweet potato fries. And I was like, I ate like five of them at the booth. I, would, I kept pretending I had to use the restroom. I would just go behind the partition and eat. The, and I'd have like, you know, a little, yeah, I'm not classy like that. But it was really pretty simple. We just wanted the, there to be something chefy about it. And the sun choke slaw really helped with that. You know, just that little touch. Yeah, fun. Other questions? Yes. God, this is almost cooked. Are Hi, you guys Alex. witnessing this? It's, it's real. Yes. Hi, we are going to be in New York City next week, and we are going to eat at your restaurant, Butter. You're going to eat at Butter next week. Thank you. Thanks, so, Mom. I want to know, what should I order? What should you order? Um, we, have a lot of, we have a few classic dishes that we can't take off the menu. I would definitely do a, a twice, sm like a smoked pork chop that's really good. You know, we kind of make stuff and then we can't believe what people order. You know, we're like, you're having that? Okay. So we've had this smoked pork chop on the menu for a long time. We just don't take it off. We just change the garnishes with the seasons. Um, and so the other day I just cooked one and ate it. I was like, this isn't so great. What's so cool about this? So I cooked one and ate it. So good. I was like, Jesus, this joint, yeah. Um, so I would have that. Um, we've had a dish called cavatappi pasta with yellow tomato sauce and spicy lamb sausage. You could have with or without the sausage. Um, we've had that on the menu forever, and I still eat it. Um, you know, 10 years of eat. I think um, I, that and I have a butternut squash soup that I serve with popcorn, and you drop the popcorn in the soup and you eat it. So I got, you can imagine that if you make something every day for years, you get sick of it. So I just said, I'm not making the butternut squash soup tonight. I'm just, I need a break. I need to heal. So I burned some candles, I listened to Adele, and I made a different soup. A couple came in and they said, we're having the squash soup. We don't have it tonight. They got up, they put their coats on, and they said, you tell her when she's ready to make that soup, we'll be back. And they stormed out. I was like, Yelp is on fire tonight. So those are my recommendations, and they're not coming off the menu. Scared. Okay, let's see. Has anybody been kind of timing this? Because seriously, this pasta's done. I'm at the point where I can just touch it and it's, yeah, yeah, it is fast. This is real. I knew that if I did this in front of people, it had to be real. And you kind of say to yourself, what do you mean? Like, this isn't really true. It's true. It's really, and it's so simple. And 
it also is good for the environment. So as far as I'm concerned, we've got a little 360 situation. Imagine if we use these in restaurants. Oh God, yeah, right? Did you see that? Just, uh, that's right, if you could cook something faster all night long in a restaurant, what kind of impact would that have on your business? But the same is true for when you're at home and you speed that up. And what did you do to speed it up? You didn't have to do anything, which I like. I like when stuff's different and you didn't do anything. I'm gonna literally take this. Can you guys see? And now I'm just, someone said yes, like excited. I heard you. You're my kind of person. Ooh, yeah. I like to do that too, drop the pasta on the bottom. I mean, drop the pasta on top. It almost starts mixing itself when you then pour it into a pan which means you did something that made less work for you. And then up from the bottom comes that cheese I put on the bottom and those beautiful basil leaves. Is everybody okay? <laughs> yeah, you can make it without the pasta, go ahead. No, you can, and it's true, there are a lot of good gluten-free pasta alternatives if you're somebody who's looking to, to live without gluten. I like that lentil pasta too pretty good, but it falls apart quickly. So the first time I cooked it, it looked great, and then two minutes later, it was like Pfft. So you have to be careful about that. Other questions? How many people will that serve? Two. What? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, how many people would that serve? I don't know. I would say eight, six to eight, depending. I kind of wasn't kidding about two. My polite answer, my civilized public answer is six to eight easily. If you were doing it as an appetizer or as, like something before, um, even more, probably 10 to 12 easily. In my house growing up for Thanksgiving, we had um, lasagna as a first course. That's how you end up being a chef with absolutely no hope whatsoever. My mom's like, it's appetizer time for Thanksgiving, it's lasagna. I'm like, of course it's lasagna. Doesn't everybody start a Thanksgiving dinner with a giant slab of lasagna? And not like a cute little square, do you know? Not like a little cube. Yeah, and then I had an aunt who would lean over and go, eat this for your grandmother. <laughs> so I had that weird layer of like family, like your grandmother's not gonna recover emotionally for a year if you don't eat all of this. And I was like, oh, all right. Other questions? So I don't think you answered, what was the worst thing that you've ever tasted on Chopped? Um, yes. I told this story once and the person, a person in the audience raised their hand and said, I'm here, I was on Chopped and I made that dish. No, it's a true story. I just want to point out a small aside. I can't go everywhere normal people go particularly the supermarket. I can walk through Times Square in broad daylight and not get recognized. If I go to a supermarket, people find me because they're thinking about food and they're like, there she is. So just as an aside also, I, I do buy some junk food. I buy a lot of broccoli and I put the food under the broccoli. Just cover the whole thing. like like you know, moss on top of everything. My daughter's like, mommy, how can we always have so much broccoli? I'm like, just be quiet and eat it. Um, the worst thing I ever ate was actually a pretty simple thing. Hi. How are you? There you go. It was really a very simple thing. It was a dessert round. I love how I'm telling this story, like, it was raining that night. Um, it was a dessert round and um, there was bread in the basket and there was hot dogs. I love hot dogs, do you? Because I really love a hot dog. Yeah. Um, by the way, I'm heating another pan because I'm going to make a second recipe now. I'm going to start by toasting some sliced almonds with the skin on. Um, the person made French toast. That's a classic chop move. We actually say to the contestants, if you can avoid French toast, please do, because we've had 800 French toasts. Um, and the French toast was delicious, but they then pureed the hot dogs in the food. Stay with me. This is my story. You do not get to suffer. I did. 
Um, they pureed the hot dogs and they smeared them all over the French toast. Anyone? And here's the problem. They, they couldn't have been nicer. They had a great reason they wanted to win. They were the nicest, sweetest, loveliest, loveliest contestant. As I recall, the other person was like not particularly likable, which we're human. We hate when the evil person wins. We're like, congratulations. You won $10,000. This person was so lovely, and they were so excited about their hot dog smeared French toast. It's so excited. Like they had reinvented the wheel, and it was so bad. It just really hurt me. It hurt my heart, my soul. Um, it was like six or seven years ago, and I'm still in therapy talking about it. She's like, tell me the hot dog story again. The other day, I had a hot dog. You know, I try to heal a little bit. By the way, I'm toasting these stovetop in a touch of butter. We're going to make a little sauteed raspberries with some sorbet. Just heated a little bit of butter, added a tiny pinch of salt. Even though it's a dessert, I often add a tiny pinch of salt to desserts. Just to make the sweet taste good, I add a pinch of salt. And I'm stovetop just warming these in a little bit of butter. This is, again, if you'll notice, I'm going to use one pan for the whole recipe. So I'm actually building a little bit of the butter is getting flavored from the salt and from the nuts. And you see how fast this is going. I'm literally slowing it down. This actually, this cookware actually makes me want to cook on top of the stove. And I actually really like to cook that way. I need a plate. Actually, you know what? No, this is fine. Um, what's that? OK. Um, I like to cook a lot of things stovetop because I can watch them. If I put stuff in the oven or I throw stuff over here, forget it. I burn everything. People say to me, you're an iron chef. You're not allowed to burn anything. Guys, I burn stuff. I still do. My daughter's been cooking a lot. She said, when do you stop cutting yourself and burning stuff? And I said, never. OK. These are already, as can you see that they're already browned? And I've got that wonderful little bit of butter. And I love crisping nuts up a little bit like this. It really develops the flavor. I'm going to take them out, and then I'm going to add just a touch more butter. I'm using the same pan twice. You see how hot it still is? I didn't even, I'm, I'm actually just going to leave this off, and I'm going to let this butter melt. There's so much heat and momentum. Do you see how even it is? This is really, this is nuts. OK. I like to cook nuts, spread them out, and let them cool a little bit. They get crispier like that. Just let them cool. Other questions? Yes. Then I'm going to add some raspberries. You got the sorbet? Alex, how often do you uh, film for your shows and for your special, you know, like the chopped and all that kind of stuff? Um, by the way, I've just got a little bit of um, brown sugar and fresh raspberries with a cinnamon stick going in the same pan with a pinch of cognac. Come on, I had to do it. Guys, I had to do it. Um, how often do I film? You know, it varies. Like, I'm, I'll have a month where I don't do anything, and then I'll have a month where I film, you know, 10 days. It just depends. What I care about is continuing to be asked to do it. Can you guys see how much, how quickly these raspberries, and they're so beautiful, they come together. I like to cook them in a little cognac, and then add a little bit more in and not finish cooking those. Cinnamon stick, I'll take it out. I'm gonna add a pinch of ground cinnamon, which I just love cinnamon and raspberries together. Another last question before I finish. You guys see how fast this is? Like, seriously. When you're judging on chopped with the other judges, are there any particular ones plate. that are difficult to come to agreement with? Or? Yeah. There are three judges. We don't always agree. Um, if you pay close attention to the show, you can actually see that sometimes one judge is pissed off because two people voted one way and another person didn't agree. It's not always unanimous. When I don't get my way, which I'm very bad at, I make sure that I say to the contestant, it wasn't unanimous. And then sometimes I say I'm going to do that in my head, and then I'm like, congratulations. Um, it's not always unanimous. It's very hard. It's hard when you like someone and they, and they lost. It's hard when you like both contestants and you want them both to win. That's often what I feel. 
I wish both people. And lately, the competition has been amazing. And I, I come down to the wire and I say, I, I, I know it sounds corny, but I wish you both could win. Would you each take 5,000 bucks? And they're like, no. <laughs> Do you guys see this? I don't think you can understand, though, just digging into a bowl. The raspberries, what would I cook them for one minute? Can you guys see this? And then the crunchy nuts on top that are a little bit salty. And then you could just drop like a little scoop on top. Yeah, and then it kind of melts. And also, this is lemon. I just picked lemon sorbet because I like it. You could drop ice cream. You could drop a whole slab. You could drop a cake on here. Um, just a super simple dessert. Gluten-free, by the way. Or you could airlift a donut on here and <laughs> screw it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chef Alex Shelley. Folks, make sure, don't forget, Turbo Pot, 4917. You, you're going to go to the booth? She'll be at the booth? So you might have some time to head on over there. She will be signing.